welcome back to us. Let me introduce you and then I'm going to turn over to you. I don't know if you have a presentation you want to share, but that will give you a second to kind of put it up. So um, Joanna Wedge is with the Child Protection Alliance. And about a week ago, she made a presentation to the Capacity Development Working Group. I guess it was more than a week, maybe two weeks ago, the Capacity Development Working Group about a new e-learning program. And she's back to kind of spread the word further than just capacity development. So Joanna, I'll turn over to you and thanks very much for joining us again. Thank you very much, Jennifer. And thanks everyone for being here at this meeting. It's exciting to be with you. It's exciting to learn that you host these kinds of things. I'm gonna start my timer because even though I've been gifted extra five minutes, I don't want to take it all. So let me start that out and I'll um, do a bit of a presentation and then leave some time in case there's questions that you have for me about what I've been talking about linkages to other tools and things you know of or work that you're doing or some suggestions for me and my colleagues in the child protection sector. Um, so uh, you've been given a little bit of an, um, a background about me. Um, I work for um, the Global Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action. I am one of the UNICEF's um, secondees to the Alliance. And I lead um, with a colleague from Save the Children, um, the working group, the global working group on our minimum standards. For like CCCM, we have a set of minimum standards, which we know of as the CPMS. Um, hopefully some of you have heard of the CPMS, perhaps know colleagues who are using them, or perhaps yourself have taken a look, particularly at the, set, the standard number 28 that, um, that covers CCCM and child protection working together. So we just wanted to take a moment to talk about our minimum standards um, and about child protection as a sector. Um, and then I'll take you um, through to our efforts on working together more closely with other humanitarian sectors in particular, CCCM and this uh, resource that we've co-developed um, with some colleagues who are online um, as well as other CCCM and CP colleagues. Um, so the minimum standards are obviously a benchmark for our sector. Um, just a reminder, we're talking about all people who are under 18 years of age being children. And child protection is about preventing and responding to the violence, exploitation, abuse and neglect of children, which can be exacerbated in humanitarian settings. As we understand, um, things get more difficult, families are under more stress, community protection mechanisms, whether they're formal ones of the state or more informal ones, um, can be diminished because of the situation of displacement or conflict or um, you know, natural disaster and, and so on. So um, that's why we have a particular focus um, on the protection of children. Um, the minimum standards were created, like your sets of standards, by um, interagency consultation. We have had them since 2012, so we've just celebrated um, now 10, 11 years of having the CPMS, and we are indeed um, uh, a member of the Humanitarian Standards Partnership. Uh, which the, the minimum standards for the CCCM sector and SPHERE and INEE, our education colleagues, are, are part of as well, and all focusing in, of course, around our core humanitarian standard. Um, one thing that we really promote about the use of the child protection minimum standards is that they are adaptable. We believe that they should be, um, except for the standard, the, the one sentence um, of each standard, the background, the guidance notes, the, um, uh, the references and so on, the indicators should be modified or contextualized for where the operation is running. Um, so this we believe is an opportunity for humanitarian actors from different perspectives, as well as development actors, government and so on to sit down and to really come up with using the CPMS, come up with what they think is a useful goal to be marking themselves against for the protection of children in that given set setting. And then like, um, uh, like really all of the minimum standards, all the humanitarian standards, we're looking at improving our quality and our accountability, in particular uh, for our set of standards about children's protection and well-being. Um, so if I can move us on to kind of how we focus in on um, ensuring that we have uh, better 
protection and well-being for children it's really kind of two pieces one is the the things that we're known for more um, more obviously where we focus on separated children on chill on preventing and responding to children who've been sexually violated or exploited, um, children who are associated with armed groups, exploitation of children's labor, those kinds of um, topics that we focus in on and as a sector. But also we then have a whole pillar really of our, um, of our minimum standards, which is about working with others. And we have a, a very strong um, initiative across the Alliance in particular within our working group about working across sectors for children's protection. Um, and here we have standards that have us uh, work alongside education and nutrition and food security and livelihoods and so on. And as I said, um, one on, um, on CCCM. So in terms of working together, we think about the interconnected needs of children. In some settings, we know that children are up to 50% of our population. And with any person in a humanitarian setting, it's not that they just need food or they just need safety or they just need clean water. It's a whole host of things, a holistic approach that we need to be thinking about. And for children with their their shorter perspective on the world, their, their less time on the world, they don't understand why they would have to go here to get um, you know, a tent and here to get food and here to have a, an understanding of how it comes together in the, the displacement camp that they're living in, etc. So really looking at um, how children see the world and their interconnected needs. By working together, we're addressing the centrality of protection, which obviously is a collective responsibility of all humanitarian actors, making sure that everybody who is going through uh, a humanitarian crisis um, is feeling safe and has the information they feel they need in order to be making uh, decisions and living a life of dignity um, in the situation that um, has been thrust upon them. And we believe, um, and we're in the process of gathering different kinds of evidence that we have a higher quality impact when we work together. So whether it's that we have more scope you know, if we're talking to CCCM and we say we've noticed this dynamic happening amongst this part of the population or in this part of a, uh, this neighborhood or this camp, um, if we're talking to health workers saying that we can spread information for you through our child friendly um, spaces, uh, through our interactions with schools, um, with the casework that we do, the individual casework we do, we can have more spread um, and cover greater populations. Um, we can have conversations that are more nuanced, whether that's with subgroups of the population, with adolescents, with adolescent mothers, whether that's with um, mothers and their young children. Um, so we can maybe reach to parts of the population um, in a more nuanced, open way than maybe um, CCCM actors or uh, actors, practitioners in other sectors might be able to do with, with their training and their background and vice versa. Um, that there's conversations that our colleagues in education, our colleagues in health and our colleagues such as you in CCCM are having with authorities, other humanitarians or parts of the affected population um, that uh, are not things that we're um, well versed in doing and yet shine a light on what are the needs of children what are the protection challenges they face? What are the capacities of children? Because of course, we're always also wanting to look at, you know, what are children able to do for themselves? Um, what's a 16 year old able to do? What's a six year old able to do? How can they um, help improve the situation of other children and the wider community itself? So the CPMS um, give us a set of common actions um, across humanitarian staff, and I'll, I'll just run through those quickly, and then we can look briefly at what they are for um, your sector and child protection working together. Um, so one of them obviously is around assessments, looking at integrating questions around children's protection and well-being into um, CCCM assessments, as well as multi-sectoral assessments. Strengthening capacities that you have, your colleagues have to safely identify and refer children who you believe to be at risk, knowing what the pathways are for doing that so that they can um, be properly assessed and, and supported. Um, supporting children in distress. So many of you, I'm sure, have gone through um, PFA training. There is actually a module that's around um, psychological first aid for children. So encouraging um, you to, to do um, such capacity strengthening. 
and then also preventing harm to children within programming. Um, and that's really uh, an important one when we think of do no harm principles and how when we're thinking about our programming is, again, as I say, children may be 50% of the affected population. How are we ensuring, how are we having a lens to reflect on whether or not the choices we're making, the decisions we're making to do or not do things in our programming might be having a negative impact on, on children. Looking at strengthening our information sharing and our monitoring mechanisms, again, in order to have um, both the quality and the better quality and, and better reach across the whole populations that we jointly serve. Um, and then very important amongst um, our, our collaboration, but obviously with other actors as well, looking at opportunities for community dialogue and for messaging with affected populations. Again, thinking that a six-year-old, a 12-year-old, a 15-year-old has different ways that they take in information, have different ways that they express themselves than a 28-year-old or a 52-year-old. So looking at ways that we can learn from each other and help us um, uh, dialogue with that part of our uh, community. And then looking at participation of affected population in this time, uh, and in this uh, sense, children. Um, and again, obviously, uh, our education colleagues and our child protection, my child protection colleagues have a lot of experience in um, uh, children's participation, uh, in assessments, in information sharing, and so on. So those are the common actions that we have across all of our sectors. Um, and then when we look at our standard 28, which is CCCM, um, thinking about um, what is the safety, the dignity, um, and the direct livelihoods of children and those who support them, their families and caregivers, um, then wanting to ensure that they have a safe living environment. So these are some of the points um, that we have, oops, sorry, big pardon, um, particularly for um, collaboration with CCCM. So ensuring that there is access in the, um, in the camp setting to life-saving assistance and to protection services for those who are under 18. Thinking through children's participation in the governance structures of, the, of CCCM. Um, uh, looking at safety and security incident monitoring. One of the really interesting crossovers we have is around dangers and injuries. So really between CCCM that often you have an overview of what's going on in that kind of way on a site. We hear things um, from children about dangers that they're facing, injuries that they've had. And then obviously our colleagues in health is another particular actor that can come together uh, to work with us to make sure that physical safety um, is, is paramount. Looking at their safe identification and referral as I've mentioned, and then also psychological first aid. So that's some of the background. And I, um, on the next page, uh, on the next slide, uh, there is this uh, website that we have about working together. We're building a one-stop buttons that if you're interested, you go to that website and I'll pop it in the chat and you'll see CCCM and Child Protection as one of the buttons. And there we're looking to have kind of the eight or 10 key documents so the relevant parts of the CCCM minimum standard, the relevant standard number 28 from the CPMS, um, an example um, uh, assessment um, tool that one could use, um, and then links to um, some of the visual tools that we've developed for working with communities about harmony between uh, child protection and CCCM, a link to the, um, the relevant, oops, reminding me to wrap it up, um, the relevant um, video that's being created um, about working together and uh, a link to um, the e-course and the module that I wanted to just quickly flag. So we have um, a multi-module e-course on our child protection minimum standards. Um, it describes how the standards are used in practical practice, in particular, how our principles, our 10 principles, which are drawn from um, sphere, but also overlay um, uh, the protection principles and also some that are specific to children. Um, and then recognizing how we can explore um, the CPMS guiding our work. So we look at coordination, we look at program cycle management, but then we have a host of standalone um, modules, one of which is now CCCM and child protection. Each module is around 30 to 45 minutes. Um, they're available in English, French, and Spanish, and soon we'll have them all available in Arabic. 
um, Ukrainian and Polish, and we expect those to be finalized. You, Arabic should be finalized by the 1st of Mar May. Ukrainian and Polish will come soon afterwards. You can find it on the Alliance website, and again, I'll pop in the chat box how you get there. And then as of mid-June, you'll be able to find all of the modules, including in all of the languages on Kaya. So many of you are using Kaya Direct, and, and um, there you can find us already, but not in all languages. Um, and so therefore, uh, at the moment, we're encouraging people to go to the Alliance website um, and we'll be circulating the Kaya website once we have it fully loaded in June. Um, so the CCCM and CP module was developed by the Alliance for Child Protection and Humanitarian Action, by IOM, by UNHCR, by the cluster, by Save the Children. So it's been a really um, big movement together to develop this 30 minute module that we're encouraging you to have a look at. It's a really interesting module for me because it's been co-developed. It really means that it's a dual track for learning. It's been developed for child protection and CCCM actors. So there's things that we learn together and then there's things that we each need to learn about each other. And so while you can take both because it may be interesting for you to know what don't child protection actors really understand about CCCM and vice versa, or you can just go through your one track and, and be learning about um, children's protection and then thinking about how do we work better together. So what we cover um, is what we have in common. So some of those actions that I've already um, mentioned, um, what are we each responsible for? Um, making sure that we continue to have um, responsibility for you know, the quality and accountability of what we are set out to do um, as humanitarian actors in our particular sector, and then looking concretely at what we can do jointly. Um, and we do that through looking at our each of our standards and pulling out some um, language from the CCCM minimum standards and from the CPMS, um, looking at some case studies um, about um, dangers and injuries or um, other uh, violations of children's right to protection in um, a displacement setting. Um, and then there's a little bit of testing so that uh, you can come out at the end, especially if you're doing it as part of the whole course with the, the completion certificate from the Alliance. Um, so that's it in terms of presentation. I don't know, I, I will pop in the chat box again, my contact um, at the CPMS working group, the Global Child Protection Minimum Standards Working Group. I'll also pop into um, uh, the chat box the, um, uh, the actual link to the site so you can have a look at it. Um, and then if I have 60 seconds, I'll just show you a little bit kind of what it looks at. Here down the side, you can see kind of the menu of what we cover. So an overview of collective responsibility, learning about each other, why is it necessary for our sectors to work together, concrete ways of working together with specific actions, and then reminding us about accountability, how fundamentally we are accountable to the populations we serve and how children are a significant portion of that. They interact with the world in a slightly different way, sometimes quite significantly different way um, than, um, than adults do. And how can we be um, living up to our, our collective responsibility to center um, the protection of affected populations, and in this case, children. So if there are questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you for your time. I hope I've sparked a bit of interest and curiosity about um, checking out the, uh, the e-module. Um, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Thanks, Joanna. I really um, appreciate the the second time that you make this presentation, and really the the very concrete links between the minimum standards and in, in child protection and the minimum standards in camp management, and really showing how they're compatible. And you've anticipated some of the topics that we'll be talking about in greater depth today. I was just looking down and seeing that we have a presentation coming in about Zeit Manager and so, um, which is one of our accountability measures. And so I, I really hope that you'll stay and not just um, tune out, but thanks for your presentation today. And I see that my colleague um, who you worked with, uh, Agnes Tillenak, 
who is a protection advisor for IOM on the CCCM team has, has joined us and has already put up her presentation. So Joanna, with that, we'll say thank you. I don't see any um, questions coming up, but if they do, we'll certainly reach out. And um, thanks for being a friend of CCCM and for your presentation and starting us off thinking about the needs of particular groups 